Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Wednesday Night Time of the Word, a ministry of Faith, Hope, and Love Ministries and Retreat Services International, with our senior pastor and founder, William Woodfield. Today's message is, Where is the Love? Let us join Pastor Woodfield. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Woodfield coming to you on this Wednesday, November 20th, 2013, welcoming you to our Wednesday night time in the Word broadcast. Today our subject will be, Where is the Love? And we're going to be looking at John the 13th chapter, and also time permits we'll be going to John the 3rd chapter, as well as John, I believe it is the 23rd chapter, but we'll give you the specific chapters and verses as we go through and as we progress through the word of the Lord on this evening. As always, I ask that you please have your Bibles handy. And a good thing about social media is that you can place us on pause while you retrieve your word so that we can read the word of the Lord together. So while you're getting your word, let us go into prayer. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you specifically for those that have been faithful to watch this broadcast or send in their comments, God. And we pray that you would bless them immensely for their faithfulness towards you, first and foremost, and towards these broadcasts that we post on social media. For those that are joining us for the very first time, God, we lift them up for free in prayer, asking that you would bless them as a result of hearing your word on this evening, God. We pray for those, Lord God, that are in Illinois, as well as those that are in the Philippines, that have just come through natural disasters, God, and the significant loss of life and property there. God, we pray that you would bless them, that you would cover them, that you would meet every one of their needs, that you would cause family units to come back together, that you would dispel any sickness, any disease, God, diseases, and prevent any further deaths. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, we want you to be glorified in all things. Now, God, as we go into your word, send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Give us understanding and illuminate us as we go through your word together. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Again, today our topic is, where is the love? And if we read through John, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse, and we'll take it from there. It says, Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify himself, him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him, little children. Yet a little while, I am with you. Ye shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, listen, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one towards another. And Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? And Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee? I will lay down my life for thy sake. And Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto you, Thee, the cock shall not crow, till thou hast denied me thrice. And again, the topic for this message for this evening is, Where is the love? And many of you know this by watching us on social media. We spoke on the subject of love quite some time ago. Basically because of the fact that the name of this ministry is Faith, Hope, and Love Ministries and Retreat Services, Retreat Services International. 
So love is very much a part of this of our title of the ministry, and also one of the basic themes of this ministry, and one of the themes of the ministry that I stand strongly by because of the fact that in order for us to get to the next level in the body of Christ, for us to receive all that God has for us, we must first and foremost receive the love of God and be the recipients of his love. And then we at some point need to learn to reciprocate God's love. And God's love is not based upon our definition of what God's love is. And if you really look at society at large, even our own individual lives and our own individual hearts and our own individual thought processes as it pertains to love, do we truly love the way that God intended for us to love? I love to like to submit to you that our love is challenged. Our love has not yet been perfected. That we're not walking in the fullness of the love of God the way that we think that we are. And the love of God, there are breaches in the walls of our defenses and what we perceive or what we think love is. And when we look at God's love, and understand how he loves us. The Bible says that when we were dead in trespasses in sins, that Christ died for us. The Bible says in John the third chapter, which is a very elementary scripture, and basically we learned this in Sunday school and vacation Bible school, and many sermons have been centered around this. John three sixteen, and years ago you would see it on T-shirts, even on billboards and postcards or posted boards at. Even major sporting events, there was someone that was bold enough and say John 3.16, which is God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves us so much so that the Bible says that he's married to the backsliders. We talked about that a bit on Sunday. But here Christ is about to leave his earthly ministry. He's on his way to Calvary, to Golgotha's hill. And he's finalizing some things that he needs to communicate to his disciples or after his uh, resurrection. Please stay tuned. There's more in store from the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Whitfield, Senior Pastor of Faith Open Love Ministries and Retreat Services International, reminding you that we post messages to social media twice a week that can be viewed 365 days a year. You can go in and select the message that is relevant for the need that you have in your life at the moment and hear what God has to say to you. Remember, our theme is empowering people to be free by the word of the Lord. God bless you. Let us now return to the Word of the Lord with Pastor William Whitfield, Senior Pastor. There are some things that he really wants to communicate rather effectively. He's not looking for eloquence here. He's not looking to stroke their emotions by his wording. He is about to lay on them something heavy. A new commandment, he says in verse 34 of John 13. He says this, a new commandment I give unto you. Now notice that he's given this new commandment to a very elect, specific, chosen group of men. And he lays it heavily upon them. Because he's saying, I'm giving you a new order, a new directive, a new set of marching orders. This is the order that I'm giving you that you must act upon it. And it's paramount, it's detrimental. 
for what I'm about to do in you, what I'm about to do for humanity, that you understand why I'm saying this to you. And that you must clearly understand why I'm saying this to you. Because you're going to be the ones leading the charge with this new commandment. This is a new thing that you've not experienced before. This is something that is going to dispel any frictions amongst your ranks. This is something that is going to eradicate hatred and anger amongst my chosen and my elect people. This is something that will breach and will constrain or cause to constrict and to seal and to prevent any further breaches in the walls of my church, of my bride. This is, in essence, the necessary organism that you need to formulate new growth and new life within the midst of your ranks and of your assemblies. That even in my absence, this commandment will stand, that it will take serious root in your hearts. Serious roots in your minds. Serious roots in all of your relationships. Serious roots in the society in which you live in. Roots into the hearts of men and women, whether they're saved men and women or whether they're unsaved men or women. This is a principle that I'm going to give to you that will guide you every single step and through every single phase and through every single difficult, every single dark night and moment in your life, through every season of uncertainty, through every season of loneliness, through every season when bitterness would attempt to come in and overtake you, this commandment has all the bases covered. And nothing will be more potent Nothing will be more powerful than this one guiding principle of your life. It is the principle that God sets as a banner over his people. It's a principle by which God forgives us. It's a principle by which God sent his only son to die on Calvary's cross and to be resurrected. It is the guiding force that causes him to send the Holy Spirit into our lives. And that word is love. And he goes on to say this, that ye love one another as I have loved you, but ye also love one another. And he goes on to say, by this shall all men, all of humanity inclusive, all of humanity, regardless of the ethnicity, regardless of their nationality, regardless of their, their physical origins, where they are, or location, or their demographics, all men will know by the love that we have one towards another. That we are the disciples of Christ. And he goes on to say in verse 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have loved one towards another. And by this title it's called Where is the Love? That's a question for us to seriously ponder. Because if we really think about the way Christ loves. We don't love the way that he loves. We have our cliques. We have our various denominations. We have our various 
other things that restrict us and hinder us. And we, the body of Christ, have not yet in this hour or in this day or in this dispensation or whatever you want to call it that we're in in this moment and in this time in our lives cannot say that we walk in the fullness of God's love. We can dispute the fact, we can become argumentative about the fact, but if we really sit down to really explore certain things, can we really justify to God himself that we are walking in, the, in love the way that he has prescribed us? The prescription, the format, the wording, the original commandment that he gave to his disciples prior to going to Calvary's cross by saying, if ye have loved one towards another, that all men shall know that you are my disciples. How many men can point at us today and identify us as the disciples of Christ by the measure of love that we have? For one another. Not just the world, but towards one another. How many times do we bicker and argue amongst ourselves and our relationships are damaged and destroyed? How many times those of us that are in ministry on the pulpit, we have hatred in our hearts because we don't love the people of God as intensely as God said we should. And we don't forgive folks because of the fact that we ourselves don't see God's love the way that he wants us to love. And people can feel it when we do love and when we don't love. When we are sincere and when we're not sincere, people are more apt to follow us when they can feel the presence of love emanating from our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. How many times that even amongst our ranks of leadership, do we fight and argue and, and our relationships are severed and we never enter to the path of forgiveness and reconciliation? How many times do us that are in leadership that hold the title, that hold the leadership role to lead people to Christ? Mr. Mark, because we don't understand the fullness of God's love. We say that we have love. We, we function in a level of love. But we don't function in the fullness of God's love. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. How can they tell that we are God's disciples? When we're fully not following Christ. In the measures of love. How can we love our families when we're not walking in trueness of love? How can we say that we're walking in love when all of our relationships are damaged and destroyed and we have no clue of asking for forgiveness or, or reconciliation? Where is the love? Our children are trying to find love in the gangs. Our daughters are trying to find love in the arms of a strange man or boy that only wants to use them and sex down their bodies. Our men and young men are forming gangs and running out here rampant to find love in a acceptance so they gang bang and they find themselves in, in criminal activities and things of that nature. Our marriages are falling apart because we are seeking other things rather than trying to repair and formulate a relationship of love. And let me tell you now that love is not materialistic in its nature and its endeavors. God loved us when we had absolutely nothing. When we had no hopes for eternal life. When we were dead in trespasses and sin. And living a nasty, vulgar, sinful life. He still yet looked upon us and loved us. How many of you can look on something that is filthy, nasty, and dirty, and smelly. That's been rolling around in the mud. And you will see that person and say, I love that person. How many times have we seen people with disheveled hair 
and body odors and nasty breath and, and crust hanging out the side of their mouths and out of their eyes and snot running down their faces. And, and we look at them and say, I, I love that person. How many times would people have been nasty and cantankerous with us? Wrote us up one side and down the other and we looked at them and said, I love that person. How many times has someone slapped you and done something wrong to you and you looked at that person and said, yeah, I love that person? I would beg to think that there may have been very few, if any, of those times or opportunities that you've ever made such a statement giving the dynamics of those situations. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Have you considered the extent of God's love to you? Let us now return to the word of the Lord. And it's so amazing, but yet all the while, we were in those very states ourselves. Even when we were wallowing around in our filthiness, when we were hanging out in the clubs, when we were doing our own things sexually, when we were drinking and snorting cocaine or coke, or when we were shooting up, when we were committing murders and robbers and robbing and lying on our family members and our friends and different ones, when we were turning people off and turning people out, and when we were doing things against people and ourselves that we knew we should not have been doing, and all the while we understood Understood that we were living in sinful lifestyle, lifestyles. And sometimes we may not have known that we were living in sin. But all the while God looked down on us and said, But yet I love them. And they are my creation. They are my sons and they are my daughters. And because of my love for them and me wanting to restore the relationship and fellowship, I'm going to do something that is unthinkable. I'm going to do something that is possibly inconceivable by their finite mind. And if they were living in my world and had to make the, some of the same decisions, would they have made the decisions that I made? But because I am a sovereign authority, a sovereign God, because I control all things, I'm going to send the full extent of my love by sending my son into their lives. How many of us would unselfishly give of our best even when things are going not the way that you want them to go. Listen, true love is this, that even when someone has done you wrong, you still love them with the same intensity. That's why I don't understand this age that we're living in, that people can walk away from people that they said that they were in love with. I'm talking about children from their parents and disrespecting them, wanting nothing else to do with them. People walking away from the household of faith that they used to love and love God and was being blessed by God. And people that don't want to be disciplined in the household of faith or even our children that don't want to be disciplined. The Bible said that if a man loves his son, that he will discipline them. And when God loves us, he's looking to make Make us move spiritually from, un, from illegitimate children to legitimize our relationship by his love for us. If we would submit and hunger and separate ourselves unto him. But because we don't understand the full operations of love, we have become a materialistic society, a self-seeking society, a society that is only involved in itself. And when it comes to true love, we have people that don't recognize people that walk in true love. As a matter of fact, we see people that walk in the trueness of God's love. 
as a sign of weakness, where God views it as a sign of strength and might and a person that is living in love relationship with him. The Bible says that we should love the Lord our God with all of our might, with all of our strength, with all of our mind, and with all of our soul, depending upon what version of, the, of it that you're reading, but in all means the same thing, that we should love with God with a greater intensity. And when you love God with a greater intensity, you love the things that he loves and you hate the things that he hates. And when you understand that when he says for you to love, you're to love until he gives the order to cease from loving. And then you're free to walk away based upon how he explains it to your spirit man. The thing is this, when God truly loves, see, we got to understand this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because love is a spirit. And God is love. The two are synonymous. And whenever you see the presence, the white dove descending, I'm not talking about a white dove that we use symbolic of love in, in marital relationships when people have doves that are released. That's a good thing to do. But I'm talking about the dove of God's spirit. The Bible says this, when Jesus was baptized, John the Baptist saw, as it were, the spirit of God descend upon him like a dove and rest upon him. When you truly seek God to love, and I've seen this in the spirit, love truly descends and ascends as a spirit. Love truly ascends and descends as a spirit. And those who walk in true love, the spirit of love has descended upon them and rests upon them. I'm not talking about receiving the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about two separate things here. When God sends the spirit of love, you know that the spirit of love rests and lights upon you. The thing is this. True love seeks to forgive. True love seeks to reunite. True love seeks to bridge, bridge or helps to take away whatever bridge, breaches are in the wall. Let me explain why love is so important to us in the body of Christ and why God sends. What would you do if one day God asked you, Thus thou lovest me more than these? That's a question that will penetrate through the marrow of your bone and you are required to answer God in truthfulness whether you love him or not. Let us now return to the word of the Lord. Love is just like or is the glue that holds the city and the wall. Love Remember I say is a banner over us. Love is the watchman that watches over us and it displays that God loves us. Love is the fuse that keeps the enemy at bay from us. When we are walking in pure love, it unites us cohesively together. Didn't say that we would not have differences, but it will not divide us. It will not cause us to be conquered. Love is the glue that holds us together. That's why God said, therefore shall a man leave his mother and his father and be united unto his wife and shall cleave unto her. It means that there will be nothing that will force them apart. 
There will be nothing in the spirit realm, the earth realm, the natural realm. There will not be a Johnny or a Fluzy or a matter that comes up that will cause them to be separated. They will understand that they will stand the test of time because love has fused them together in such a way that there is no dynamic that can ever enter into their lives. No challenge, no situation that they cannot work through. Nothing that will come up against them that will ever be able to separate them from the love that God has put in them through his spirit. They understand the cohesiveness of God. When we understand the cohesiveness between us and Christ and us and our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, then we're not so easy to walk in the spirit of unlovingness. Nor will we ask the question, where is the love? Because when we see the love and the enemy sees the love, he realizes that he has to work double, triple, quadruple overtime to make any attempts to even attempt to penetrate us. But when he sees that there are no breaches in the wall, as we talked about when a house is swept and garnished and cleaned, that that spirit comes back looking for an entrance. But love, pure love, godly love, listen to me, keeps him at bay. It repels him. Just like the strongest mosquito spray that really, really, really works. You know, some of that stuff you buy, it don't work. But I'm talking about buying something that has been proven to be effective. And even it takes into consideration the evolution of a thing or a matter. How the enemy will evolve because he sees that love is so strong. So now he has to evolve in his thought processes to find a different way in to attack, to cause there to be division and separation. The thing is, when we were walking in the fullness of the power of God, there were no divisions. There were no divisivenesses. We settled our difference through prayer, through fasting, to coming together and reasoning together, talking things over, understanding one's perspective over another perspective, and looking at one another and challenging them and spurring them on to greatness and to love by saying, brother, I see it your way. Maybe my way was wrong. Let's try it this way. Let us work together. And we came to understand that a cord of three, a threefold cord is not easily broken. We came to understand that where there is unity, there is strength. We came to understand if one can chase a thousand, if we put two together, we can chase ten thousand when we learn to walk in the depths of God's love. We understood that we could become a powerhouse if our love was pure, if we didn't focus on ourselves, if we all focus our attention upon the heartbeat of God, if we put our focus on the heart of God, we would be able to find where the love is, and the love is in God. And there would never be a need to ask the question, where? is the love because we have tapped in to the love of God, the purity of God's love, the understanding of God's love, and the feeling to be filled with all the depths of God's love. If we truly understand that, then even our brothers and our sisters that we have damaged or challenged relationships with, if we would really seek the love of God to the level of God's intents and intentions for us, we would go on to the greatness of the love. Now let's go back to the text that we were talking about because there's something that is key here to this text. And the text says, verse 35, I'm going to go back there and, start and, and, and stop there. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go back to verse 34 and go from there. A new commandment I give unto you, 
that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one, if ye have loved one to another. But listen, this is something that really struck me and stood out today. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither thou goest? Jesus answered him, whither I go, thou, can, thou canst not follow me. But thou shalt follow me afterwards. Notice this. Jesus is talking about laying a new commandment on him, on, on his disciples. And he's already talked about he's about to lead them. And notice, Peter is not even focused on the love. He's focused on where you're going. You're going to leave us? He is talking about something greater. And he's going on to something that really is minor because he's concerned about his own comfort and not worrying about Jesus or concerned about Jesus' ultimate assignment that he will come to extend love into every single heart. It's amazing how quickly we lose focus on what really is important. And I like to say this in the body of Christ. We have lost focus on what's truly important. And that is the love of Jesus Christ. How many of us can fully say honestly that love truly exists in our hearts to the fullness of God's intentions? How many of us can say that we truly love the service of God, the people of God, or God himself, or the work that we've been assigned to do, or our brothers or our sisters that have treated us wrong, how many of us can say that we truly have the love of God? And even us as ministers, we stand week after week. How many times a week you have service. How many times you may preach or teach a week. Regardless of what medium that you may be channeling your message through. Whether it's through over a pulpit. Now don't get tripped up on channeling. I know what some of you know about channeling. I'm not talking about demonic forces. I'm not talking about demonic spirits or witchcrafts or warlocks. I'm not talking about that type of thing. I'm talking about the place from which you declare the word of the Lord. Whether it's through a pulpit, whether it's over social media, whether it's on the television, whether it's over the radio, whether it's through tapes or videos or, or, or CDs or DVDs or MP3 players or, or other aspects of things, devices that you use to get the message of Jesus Christ out to men and women. How many of you can really say that the love of God truly exists in your heart to the intensity of God's intentions? I think, and me inclusive, I'm not better than anybody else. This message had to come to me first. How many times do we truly say we love and we seek the repairing of relationships and even our relationship with God? Don't we know that he's going to hold us far more accountable than the sheep to which we lead? How many times he's going to hold us far more accountable the higher that we rise in the ranks in the church of God. How many times do we know that when we stand before him and have to give, it a, give an accounting of the deeds done in the flesh and when he says, you went loveless, you didn't apply the level of love that I commanded you to apply. You were selective in whom you would love and how you would love them. You thought materialism 
was the extent of the display of me showing my love to you. No, that was my provision. And my provision has nothing to do with my love. I love you. Because you're part of my humanity. I supply your every need because it's necessary for the sustaining of life. I gave you intellect and the ability to gain wealth so that you can get what you wanted out of life. But also supply the needs for my kingdom. How much did you love me and stored up treasures in heaven? And how much did you truly love yourself? How many times did you fall in love with your imagery, your wardrobe, your education, your car, your family? How many things that you love greater than me? Remember, I already talked to you about imagery. And God said, thou shall have no other idols or images before him. But if we truly love him. All those things that we possess means nothing when it comes to displaying the love of God. And if we really love the way that God says he loves, then there would be no means to cause separation between us as the members of the body of Christ. We want to remind everyone everywhere that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Whitfield reminding you that we post messages on social media twice a week where you can view them 24 hours a day, 365 days out of the year by selecting a message that is relevant for your situation and hearing what God has to say to you. God bless you and join us as we declare the word of the Lord as we're empowering people to be free by the word of the Lord. We thank you for tuning into our broadcast shared with a friend, family member, co-worker that we're on social media blessing people with the word of the Lord. If we truly loved the way that God says for us to love, we would be the example of the church world, of this society, of our age, of this world at large. People will be able to come to the church, and that's why we're experiencing, whether we want to talk about it or not, a great falling away from the church world is because of the fact that we don't love God the way that we say we love God, and we don't love people the way that He loves people. Listen, people are in third world countries dying, being in prison and incarcerated today because of their love for God. They are fighting and resisting death and all evil and anyone that tries to persecute them because of their faith, they're willing to be incarcerated for it because they will not deny him. They're willing to be killed for it because they will not walk away from him. They love him so much that they don't mind having their names marked and their reputations dragged through the mud. They don't mind being made a spectacle because of their love for Christ. They don't mind having their possessions taken from them. Because of their love for Christ. They don't mind being publicly humiliated because of their love for Christ. They don't mind sleeping in mud huts and, and having to walk dirt roads. And listen, there are some people in countries that will walk 10 miles or more to get to a revival service. Because that's their only means of transportation. And even at night where we have city lights, they don't but they're willing to walk as far as they can because they want to hear what God has to say. They want to be around those that are like-minded that may not have much of anything, but yet they love God. They may have one outfit that they wear continuously because they're that broke or poor, but they love God. But yet, 
we have all the trappings, all the luxuries, all the, the, the best paying jobs and cars or job period. But yet, we use an excuse as to why we love God the way that we do in the limited form and fashion that we do. We use excuses for coming out to the household of faith. We use excuses for, I need to rest on the day of worship. I don't need to go to Bible study. I can lay here and learn God myself. Well, this ministry will always push you to find a place of worship where the servants of the Lord are teaching and preaching the true, unadulterated, uncompromised, unwatered down, not sugar-coated word of the Lord. Because the Bible said that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves. One of the major signs that we're living in the last day is that the love of many, the Bible said, would wax cold. Just talking to a friend on last evening, I remember when I was first saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I remember my car being in an accident. And I had to walk from my home in the middle of the winter, pouring down rain, freezing, because the bus took so long to get there. And I would walk five miles to church in the pouring rain, a lot of times without an umbrella. Get there would be soaking wet and freezing and sat through an entire service because I was so hungry and eager to hear the word of the Lord. Then would have to walk back home again in the cold and in the rain and had to get up the next morning to go to work. But yet, we would have revival services sometime back to back, week after week. But yet, it was refreshing to get to the household of faith because I was developing a love relationship and my temporary, temporary inconveniences weren't that important. And when I got that car back, there were people that lived on opposite sides of town that could not get home, and I would take them home and would not complain, would not ask for a dime, because I loved being around the household of faith and the people of God, and I would go above and beyond to do what was necessary to prove my love to God and my love towards his household and love towards his people. And then I thought about how I walked away from God in those things and refused to do those things. But yet when I returned, yes, people will take advantage of you. And I have been taken advantage of, of, and I'm quite sure many of you have as well. But when you understand the love of God, you learn to forgive and walk away from the hurtful place. To walk into the place of healing. To say that I love you regardless of what you may have said or what you may have done. I understand how important this is to the heartbeat of God that I love you as your brother or as your sister, as my brother, as my sister. I must love you because I'm commanded by God and whether he commands me to do so or not, I'm still going to walk in the love of God because I understand that there is a power source and there is a place that you can tap into that causes you to find where the love is located in God. It's a tragic question when we who have been filled with the love of God have to ask, where is the love in the household of faith? I believe that if we would repent and confess our lack to love the way that God said love and seek him in seriousness. I'm not talking about calling for a national or international day of prayer. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when every spirit-filled believer sees its enemy, the devil, as he is. 
and recognize that we must bridge and repair the wall as Nehemiah did so that we could force our enemies out. And we begin to pray by the leading of the Holy Spirit of God in unison. And we lay aside our differences and the body of Christ prays corporately, continuously, without letting it go, I believe that we will be on the threshold of our greatest hour in the Lord. I don't know about you, but I believe that hour to come. Because the thing is this, our children are dying in the streets. Our next generation needs the opportunity to experience the vastness of God. If finding true love for you has been an issue, then you need to turn your focus and your attention to securing the love of Jesus Christ. He stands with open arms waiting to receive you. There is nothing that you've done that would ever turn him off. Let us now return to Until work. they experience the true level of the love of God in the earth, they will not change. I need to see the love of God flowing through the body of Christ before I close my eyes. If we would learn to love the way that God teaches us to love, we can dispel molestation from our ranks, incest from our ranks, perversions from our ranks, embezzlements from our ranks, church drama from our ranks. We can dispel and we can say lead the spirit of entertainment from our churches, the spirit of religiosity from our churches. We can dispel the demonic spirits that have taken residence in our households of faith. We can rebuke every witchcraft and warlock spirit when true love exists in our ranks. When true love comes, it is an eye opener and it's a game changer because it will expose wickedness in high places. It will expose people that God never intended to be in positions in the household of faith. It will show you the truth. You cannot love and not walk in truth. You cannot love and not walk in power and authority. You cannot love and, and not be humble by God. You cannot love the way that he loves. Because one of the things that he asked Peter, Peter, does that, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Then he asked him a second time, Peter, do thou lovest me more than these? Then feed my lambs. Then he goes on and asks him a third time, Peter, do you love me? And God is asking us the same question. And he reverses it by saying and asking us, where is my love resident in you? That should be a very profound, penetrating question. Poignant. To the point if there's an absence of it. But it also will cause you to examine yourself. To see if the love of God is in you. And if it is, what measure of it is in you. And what are you doing to seek the greater depths of God's love? Are you challenged to go back? And repair those relationships. And say, listen, brother, sister, we're on the same side. I know we had our differences. I know that we had our fallings out. But listen, in order for me to get where God wants me to go, 
and the truth be told in order for you to get to the fullness that God wants you to get to, we've got to settle this matter effectively. Whether we see each other or not ever again in this life, we must depart with the proper mentality that I forgive you. And because I forgive you, there's no need to hold any harm. I hold you harmless and blameless to let you know that you are my brother, you are my sister, and I love you from the depths of the love that God has placed in my heart sincerely. This isn't a fictitious thing. This is not a made-up thing. But from the depths of my heart, I love you as though you were me or though you were my brother or my sister. When we understand the depths of God's love, he calls us into his bedchamber. When we talk about bedchamber, we're talking about the most intimate of places and we're not talking about sexually we're talking about impurity to enjoin him in a relationship that is wholesome that is rightful that is loving and compassionate in his nature the place where he has our best interest in mind and best interest means that you don't always get out of the relationship the things that you want but you come to understand a relationship of love I was reading something the other day that said that two persons were so in love that they had come to an understanding that they were not going to base their love on the materialistic things of life but they were going to base their love based upon their mutual respect and honesty and trust for one another. They were going to push one another on to greatness. And they were going to make sure that each party was never disrespected by the other. They had come to an agreement that even if they lived in a small domicile with very few possessions that they would never depart and leave one another because love and the honor of love was so important to them that they made up in their mind what was truly important and they understood that if they left this world that the material possessions that they had amassed would still yet be here and they would be gone. But that life was too short to live a life without loving and embracing someone. That's why God says, it is not good for the man to be alone. And God never leaves us hanging. He never puts us out. He never disrespects us. He never says enough is enough. Three strikes and you're out. He never puts us over someone else. But he loves us all equally and equitably. And he's always fair and above board. And when he looks at us with the light of his love, when he sees something wrong, his heart hurts and his heart pants and beats towards us. You and I must love the way that God loves if we want to see the return of his power to the church. We must love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our might, then and only then will the question be answered, where is the love? Because the love is in God, and due to our closeness and proximity to honor him in his words, the love is in our hearts. 
men and women in this age need to see the love of God. Will you be that beacon of love? Will you be that beacon of light? And let God shine love through you. This is the hour that we need to answer the question. Will you love as he loved? And are you willing to lay down your life for your friends to prove the love of God in the earth? This is Pastor Whitfield saying, it's time for us to return to the love of God. Until next weekend, God bless you and pray that God will fill us all with his intense love. We need it and this is the hour for it. Amen. We at Faith, Hope, and Love Ministries and Retreat Services International wish to thank you for tuning in to the Word of the Lord on social media. Tell your family members, friends, associates, co-workers, spouses, children, and relatives that we are here pronouncing blessings from the Word of the Lord and giving you thus saith the Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord unto the glory of God the Father and we want you to know that he is the one to be served and honored. God bless you until next week. Have a blessed week in the Lord.